Hello, and welcome to the screencast for uh, Calculus 1 on the Intermediate Value Theorem. So, first of all, I want to review what we mean by a function being continuous on an interval. So we say that a function f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, provided that the limit as x approaches c equals f of x, that the limit as x approaches c of f of x equals f of c for all c in the interval a, b. That's just saying f is continuous, is continuous at all points in interval a, b because the limit exists and equals the function value. And then at the end points, because a closed interval a, b means that we include the end point a and the end point b, we need the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x to be f of a. We often call this continuous from the right at a, because we don't even know if f is defined for numbers less than a. And at b, we need the limit as x approaches b from the left of f of x to equal f of b, because that's all that we can have. We don't know that there is a limit from the right uh, at b, for example. So let's take a look at this graph and discuss the continuity on various intervals here. So we see we've got a couple spots where we have discontinuities. Here we have a removable discontinuity. We have one point uh, here corresponding to about x equals 2.5, where the graph has a limit, the function has a limit, but it's not equal to, the limit is not equal to the value of the function. Here, at x equals 3, we have what we usually call a jump discontinuity, where the limit from the left, as x approaches 3, appears to be about 12, and the limit as x approaches 3 from the right is 0, and the function value, f of 3, is 0. So the limit doesn't exist uh, at 3. The limit of f of x doesn't exist at 3. What can we say about these intervals and if f is continuous on them? So if we look first at the interval from 0 to 2, or 0 to 2 here, and we look at the graph, and it's one unbroken piece, so we're happy with that. 0 to 2.75, though, that would take us over to about here. And notice we've got one point where we've got a removable discontinuity. What about 2.75 to 3? That'd be this little snippet. Well, we're all good except for that very last criterion because we have this jump, and what's going on here is the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of f of x is not equal to f of 3. So this gets an x as well. It doesn't meet the last criterion uh, for continuity. From th on the interval from 3 to 5, so that'd be here, to here, that meets all of our criteria because we don't care what's going on from the left at 3. We only care about the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of f of x. Uh, that equals f of 3, which is 0. And everything else is perfectly good, out to 5, and we can even extend that all the way out to 7. Okay, so we found some intervals where this function is continuous and others where it is not. So here's what the intermediate value theorem says, a reminder of your reading. It says if f of x is a continuous function on a closed interval a, b, then for every value m, so we're thinking m is a, a real number, between f of a and f of b, now f of a might be less than f of b, f of b might be less than f of a, um, this isn't really useful if f of a equals f of b because then there are no numbers between them. Uh, there, so for every number m between f of a and f of b, there exists at least one number c in the interval a, b such that f of c equals m. And hopefully you're not surprised by this because this is just saying that a continuous function can't skip values. So if we're starting here at a, and here's b, and here we've got 
to the point A, F of A. And here we've got the point B, F of B. And if we picked, so then, some value M lurking in between them, well, since the function F is continuous, and I want to find somewhere where F equals F of C equals M, okay, how am I going to avoid M? Uh, Got to get up to B, F of B. There's no way to avoid it, and so that would be our C. Now, maybe there's lots of them. Maybe the graph instead um, does that, and this is our, our M level, and here's our A, and here's our B. Okay, so maybe there are lots of values C. All we know is that there exists at least one number C, and the theorem itself doesn't actually tell us how to find C. It's an, what we call an existence theorem. It tells us it's there, it doesn't tell us how to find it. And actually proving this theorem, which we won't do, it was a real achievement that, that took a deep understanding of what it meant for a function to be continuous on a closed interval and what the real numbers even are. And it relies on a property called the completeness of the real numbers. Okay, so let's apply the intermediate value theorem uh, to this function. So, could we use the intermediate value theorem to guarantee the existence of a number c such that f of c equals 5? Well, of course, you can look at the graph and say, well, there's a couple spots where f of c equals 5, but how could we use the intermediate value theorem? Well, we notice here that uh, f of 0 equals 6, and f of 1 equals 4. And 5 is between 4 and 6. So if we applied the intermediate value theorem to the interval 0, 1, then we would know that there is some real number between 0 and 1 where f of c equals 5, because at one end, over here at 1, f, uh, f of 1 is 4, which is less than 5, and at the other end, it's f of 0 is 6, which is greater than 5. There's no way to get from 6 to 4 without going through 5. Uh, now, if we picked a different interval, if we picked, say, the interval 1, 2, right, notice that 1, 2, uh, sorry, uh, 0, 2 doesn't help for that one, because what we would need then is we're saying, well, zero were uh, at six and two were at seven. So that would tell us there's a value, there's a point where the function takes on a value between six, every value between six and seven, but five isn't between six and seven. Uh, what about 3.5? Here's where we have to be careful and that we need continuity, because if we notice that f of three equals zero, you might be tempted to say, well, 3.5, oops, uh, 3.5, lives between 4 and 0. And f of 1 equals 4 and f of 3 equals 0. But the function is not continuous on the interval on 1, 3. So we can't use the IVT. And looking at the graph, we can tell there's nowhere to f of c equals 3.5 anyway. f of c equals 0? Well, if we came in here and we said, well, f is positive at 5, and f is negative at 7, and f, we already agreed, was continuous on that interval. Now, f of c equals 1 is a little bit tricky, because we look at the graph, and we say, well, it looks like f of c equals 1, but... Uh, we can't use the IVT because we need somewhere on this piece of the graph. We can't use anything over here because of this discontinuity at 3. Right? We have this big discontinuity at 3. And nowhere in the part where f is continuous from 3 to 7 do we see a value greater than 1. So. We can't use the IVT since no f of x greater than 1 or 
x uh, greater than or equal to 3. Okay, so the intermediate value theorem is useful, but uh, not without its limits. So let's take a look at the bisection method for uh, finding zeros or roots of functions. So here's a function, f of x equals tangent of x minus 1 divided by 2 minus x cubed plus 2x plus e. And so can we figure out if this would ever be zero? Well, first of all, I just started trying some numbers and said, well, if I put in f of minus 2 and work it out on the calculator, I get about minus 7.383. And if I put in f of 0, I get about 2.172. So if we want to use the IVT, we have to think about, is f continuous on the interval minus 2, 0? And we have to think this part, the polynomial part, is continuous for all real numbers. So our only problem is here. So we worry about tangent. And we notice that uh, when we substitute in minus 2 for x, then we're putting in uh, minus 1.5, minus 3 over 2, into tangent. And tangent is, and then 0 is 0, uh, or is minus a half. Um, going into tangent. And tangent is discontinuous um, at minus pi over 2, uh, and pi over 2, and so on, which uh, that's about 1.7 something. So yes, we're good. F is continuous on this interval. And uh, you could graph it or something like that if you want to check yourself a little more. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at this piece by piece. And so the bisection method says every time we have an interval, so we're going to start with the interval from 0 to 2, or minus 2 to 0, and we're going to say, let's cut that in half. So here we've got minus 2, here we've got 0, and so minus 1 is in between. Now either we're going to find that minus 1 is a 0, or we're going to find that it's positive or negative. And once we know what it's the sign of f of minus 1 is, then we can pick either this interval or this interval. So I went out and calculated that f of minus 2 we had before, and f of minus 1 is 0 0.161. So here it's f is positive and here it's negative. So that tells us that the 0 has to be in that interval somewhere. Or there has to be at least one 0 in there. So now we'll look at the interval from minus 1 to minus 2. Again, minus 2, minus 1. The midpoint of that is minus 3 halves. We check and we find that we're positive here and negative here, so the 0 has to be between minus 2 and minus 3 halves. Again, minus 2, minus 1.5, so here we've got minus 1.75, and now we find that f of minus 1.75 is negative, f of minus 1.5 is positive, so the zero has to be between minus 1.75 and minus 1.5. Again, repeat this process, I won't write out the graph, minus 1.75 to minus 1.5, the midpoint's minus 1.625, check the signs, and so we find out that the, now we're really close, right, at minus 1.625, we're close to zero at minus 1.5. We're slightly less close to zero, but we're still pretty close to zero. And so we know that the zero lies between minus 1.625 and minus 1.5. We could repeat this a few more times, but we've already honed in fairly close that we're probably around maybe minus 1.6 or somewhere thereabouts. And uh, we can stop there uh, for the moment. This is a a stronger version of this is actually what a lot of calculators and computer algebra systems use to find zeros uh, of uh, various functions or fragments of functions. So thanks for listening. Hope you found this helpful.